My grandfather was on a ship called the SS Carolina, and it was during World War I. Um, the day was called Black Sunday, and when they got close to Atlantic City, the, they were accosted by a German U-boat that actually stopped and boarded their ship and said, you've got 10 minutes to get off the ship. We're going to torpedo it. So they started on lifeboats to Atlantic City. Some of the lifeboats didn't make it, but fortunately my grandfather's did. And there are pictures in the New York Times showing these bedraggled people that had been at sea for 48 hours and um, they made ground in Atlantic City. So when people would ask my grandfather, what's your port of entry? He would say Atlantic City. In time, my father then applied for citizenship and he was impressed by certain words of the Constitution, you know, without regard to race, creed, color, national origin. Words that are just thrown around. But he believed in that. I went to a grammar school here in Camden, and I went to high school here, Camden Catholic. You know, it was a thriving community. We had Campbell's Soup, we had RCA. After high school, I spent a year at Niagara University. When I came home from Niagara that first summer, I met my wife at Cooper Hospital. She was a student nurse. She happened to be nursing my mother, who was a patient at the time, and we started dating. Then the war broke out, and then we had to make a choice. Either you go back to Niagara, which is a commitment to the seminary, or you go into the service. I spent close to three years in the Army. When I came out of the Army, I enrolled at LaSalle. My senior year at LaSalle, we were married. Shortly after LaSalle, uh, my first daughter was born. So I w went to law school when she was an infant to Rutgers across the street. One day a week, he worked in Clayton, New Jersey and, and gave um, advice to um, farm workers down there. He would go at night and there would be the lobby would be filled with people and I loved to go with him. I would sit out in the lobby and color and do whatever and just talk to the people. So Our family was the first of Cuban and Puerto Rican. As the community grew, they of course would come to us for assistance. Joe was at the time, uh, was only one of four Hispanic lawyers in the state. It was sort of a white male, you know, dominated practice. I would always say they were coming to me, not because I was the sharpest pencil in the box. I was the only pencil in the box, which put me in a position of representing individuals in municipal court and seeing how the change in the community was creating tensions. Joe was on the board of directors that brought legal services to Camden. Nobody wanted legal services. Uh, the lawyers didn't want legal services because um, the lawyers thought that legal services would take or usurp all the business that parenthetically the lawyers didn't want anyhow. We opened an office and we opened our doors. Um, we had wall-to-wall -wall people, you know, and no experience, but people like Joe Rodriguez um, uh, stood there and fought for us. I was the first one hired out of six attorneys in a program called Legiscope in Gloucester, Salem, and Cumberland County. And I participated in a number of controversial activities, including the first rent strike in the state of New Jersey, which was in Paulsboro in uh, 1967 and all of a sudden I'm terminated and I'm terminated because I was bringing what I thought were traditional important legal service type cases and that's when Dave Epstein, Joe Rodriguez, George Kugler uh, stepped in. We went through a process of a couple of months with the regional director in New York and he said if you can get Camden County to accept the uh, other three counties, 
will amend their application to include Camden and we'll call it Camden Regional with four counties. It was through the legal service office that the case was started, the Marini versus Ireland, that is the one dealing with landlord and tenant. And then the, the, the conflicts with the municipal court through legal service again, we brought an action against the municipal court saying, even on a disorderly, disorderly person's offense, if in fact there's even the thought that they could be put in jail, you must assign an attorney. I'd say the most significant thing at legal services that I did, and Joe Rodriguez played a really integral part, was the bringing of the Mount Laurel case. The chief counsel on the case was Carl Biscare, who had just come from Penn uh, Law School. I knew Joe when I started in Camden Regional Legal Services. He was one of the really uh, su superior lawyers in, um, in the Camden area and was a huge help to me personally. They came up with the idea of uh, having affordable housing, you know, in the suburbs for people who couldn't afford it. But, you know, we're all brand new young lawyers and uh, nobody really knew much about real complicated, tough practice of law, but Rodriguez did. We went over to Brown Connery and we set up me night meetings with Joe Rodriguez. Joe basically walked me through the most mundane things that you had to know. I asked him like, how do you get something into evidence? He says, well, you do. I said, no, Joe, how do you actually get it into evidence? What do you say? Joe helped us literally draft the original Mount Laurel complaint, which was filed in May of 1971, leading to the two Supreme Court cases of Mount Laurel one in 75, Mount Laurel two in 1983, both unanimous decisions, New Jersey Supreme Court, and changed the entire landscape of affordable housing and opened the suburbs. In 1971, there was that they call it the Puerto Rican riot, but it was the community reacting to a police activity. A police officer um, in an automobile stop uh, uh, poked a Hispanic guy in the stomach with a with a baton, a billy club, and uh, caused him pretty serious injuries and uh, put him in the hospital in a coma. My brother and I were the representatives of the community that were seen as violent people, and they weren't. They were church people. My mother and father were part of that group that were just asking for the city to respond to the activity of the police officers. So uh, the tensions continue to grow. Houses were being burned. Uh, gunshots were being fired. The city uh, uh, shut down. Nobody could enter the city. State police came in because the police wouldn't patrol the streets because the officers were being suspended. And Joe would walk around the streets as a marshal. Joe Nardi and Joe Rodriguez, you know, met with the leaders of the Hispanic community besides himself. The, chief of police, lawyers for the officers, uh, representatives of the governor's office. The activity between the police and the community has reached national praise. Because the uh, Scott Thompson, who was the chief of police, reorganized the police and had community policing where they make friends with the community. He became chairman of the state board of higher education. The thousand things he did after that, whether it was the uh, state crime commission or a federal judge, you know, he became the second public advocate in the state. Judge Rodriguez was a big supporter of and involved with Camden County Bar Association, and I became involved in that as well. Camden County Bar Association created what we call the Public Benefits Committee. And one of the first things we did was created a Christmas party for underprivileged kids in Camden. And early on, Judge Rodriguez volunteered to be the Santa. You know, he was, he was a kind soul and he was the perfect Santa. 
And he did every year. He was such a wonderful man and such a, a, a role model for me. We were always told you're fortunate and you've got an obligation. Always have an obligation to do what you can to give back. And that was just the way we were raised. He wasn't committed to making, you know, these extraordinary dollars that some lawyers make today. He was totally committed to making things better. He, by example, uh, created for me a social consciousness in representing the law, representing people in the law, and he did that with an awful lot of people. We always end the story with, uh, I'm sitting in court one day, and divers found uh, a wreck 40 miles off the coast of New Jersey and they brought into my courtroom a bronze sea. It was the sea from the fantail of the Carolina. So I took jurisdiction over the salvage of the Carolina. The, my order with my name on it is attached to the wreck that's 40 miles off the coast of New Jersey. That was the ship my father was on. And I often say, I'm sure at 21, he's leaving a sunken vessel and never dreamed that his son one day would have his name on the wreck that's off the coast of New Jersey.